How you feel about Iowa? Love it. Love this free ice cream you get. See in a single season. Still shaking. I don't even, what is Iowa? What is this place? It was incredible. <laughs> Tell us how you feel about your first hunt in the snow. It was absolutely freezing, but this is something I've dreamed about. I've always seen the snow at home a couple of times, but it always falls in like February after the season goes out, so. When you grow up in the south, you dream about deer hunting in the snow, let alone Iowa deer hunting. So it's like a pretty cool moment right here. I mean, it's a dream, dream come true for real. I'm tore up. I mean, that's not just one, but two shooters right there. I mean, and close. I mean, those are deer less than 100 yards, just not in bow range. I saw a mega giant come off the private and come into here last night right at dark, so. There could be absolutely nothing in here, or he could be in here, who knows, but I came in here and took me forever to get set up. I don't think there are even words for moments like that. I mean, that's the biggest deer I've ever seen in my life. You wait your whole life, especially a kid from the South. You wait your whole life for that right there, and to pick this tree in the dark and him walk right under it. You're kidding me. <laughs> Ten minutes to go. two periods each season when we struggle to put bucks on the ground. The first one occurs in early to mid-October and is often referred to as the October lull. The second period is right now. It is gun season here in Iowa and we are mostly bow hunters. That is a big part of the reason this time frame kicks our tail each year. Another reason is wary deer made hyper alert and decidedly nocturnal by nine weeks of hunting pressure. And even after the gun season's end, it still takes time for the deer to relax and fall back into daylight movement patterns. Given this headwind, we do well to eke out even a few buck kills each year during early December. So that is where we find ourselves now, heading into the second week of the month, but there have been a few bright spots. If you remember last week, I profiled the trials and tribulations of a young intern from Georgia. I called him poor young Max Mongrello. Well now, he is just young Max Mongrello. He is not poor any longer, at least as relates to whitetail deer. Caleb Griner has become the default guide for anyone on the Midwest Whitetail team who is struggling to tag a buck. He was there three weeks ago when Collins Marine shot a big 10-pointer. He was there two weeks ago when Josh Sparks almost filled his tag. And he was there last week when Max Mongrello finally realized his dream of shooting a big whitetail in the Midwest on the last day of the first split of Iowa's bow season. All right, well, today's December 6th. Uh, I'm not actually out on public today. This afternoon, I'm on some private land with uh, one of Josh's good buddies, Caleb Griner. We came over to his farm this afternoon. He didn't have anybody to run a camera for him, and he's been filming everybody all year, so I figured I would uh, do him a favor and come and film for him. But it's a little bit unique tonight. I'm not actually stuck behind the camera per se. I got my bow in the tree and um, Caleb's only got two deer on this farm that he's targeting and any other mature deer he says I'm welcome to take so 
we're uh, excited about tonight. Shotgun season actually comes in in the morning. So uh, it's our last ditch effort on this farm here to get it done. See that other buck anywhere? It was about 4:30 here. We've seen pretty good movement so far. Actually, about 30 minutes after we got in the tree, we had a deer that I would shoot come out of the CRP a couple hundred yards off and actually work right to us. And not until we got to about 80 yards, we realized he was falling a little doe. I'm not talking too loud right now because they're actually bedded right now within 100 yards. They're just bedded almost right off the edge of this turnip plot right here. They've been bedded there for probably 30 minutes or so, at least, and they don't look like they're getting up to go anywhere. We haven't tried calling or anything really at them just because we don't want to scare that doe. Our hope is that pretty soon she's going to get up and come work out to these turnips, but who knows. How do you think it happened? This guy's here, she's looking. Look at them all. They're just ripping through there. Oh, come on, dude. Hurry up, get a move on it. Here, I'll try to hurry him up. did? Oh, Dude, that's a shooter, isn't it? I think so. These are broken up. No, he's tight. He's tall. Come on, do it. Ten minutes to go. <laughs> partly shaken now because I just shot it, but partly because it is dropping like temperature so fast. It's probably 20 degrees now. We are so high. This wind is killing us. So <laughs> that's a crazy <laughs> way to wrap up the postseason. Just to have Caleb here. I mean, I can't thank him enough for taking me out on his farm and. That was just so cool. I mean, Caleb <laughs> grunted that deer in from every bit of 300 yards and he came in running. <laughs> that was just too cool. We're gonna get down out of this tree and take the camera back to the car. Collins is actually just sitting like a few hundred yards away, glass in a field. <clears throat> he was trying to make a play for shotgun season. <laughs> but uh, we're gonna go regroup, see what this looks like. <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> Look at that. That's why we didn't see it. Well, it's covered in blood. Dude, it's, it's just, it's, man, that's. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Make it 10 yards in the woods, <laughs> <Nice> baby. Job, <laughs> 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 hold, hold tight. That's crazy. All right, well, we got them all tagged up and dragged out here to the uh, little scrape plot here. What a just an epic culmination of events this season has been. I mean, since I was a kid, I was just been a lifelong dream, and this season has just been amazing. The amount of encounters that between me and Josh, it's just we're well over a dozen encounters with mature bucks, and for it to finally happen with 10 minutes to go in the regular archery season is just unbelievable. 
We had an incredible hunt this afternoon with me and Caleb. We saw multiple bucks. This is actually the third shooter that we saw. The other two just didn't work out. We had that one come in and bed down on the doe only 75 yards away. But uh, just to put the cap on this regular season, it's just amazing. I'm glad to be able to have friends here to do it with me. I can't uh, thank Caleb enough for letting me come out and hunt with him on his farm. It was a special afternoon and really it's just been a special season. It's been one to one for the memory books. Next, we need to catch up with Jared Mills. After finally seeing the buck he calls Marino on his river farm, Jared quickly decides to ignore that deer for now, saving him instead for the late season when most of the other deer on Jared's radar will be either dead, pushed off, or laying low. With that in mind, Jared focused all his efforts during the week before gun season on the giant 10-pointer that was showing up on the pit cornfield. It was an interesting week, to say the least. He was 60 yards and walking straight at me. Um, but the problem was I had does inside 10 yards at the same time. So it was gonna be interesting either way to see if I could even get drawn back and get a shot off at him with that many deer around, but I would have liked the opportunity to have tried. Though Jared didn't kill the buck, it was exciting to watch the action unfold. Hopefully the buck will still be there after the gun seasons. Maybe we will see him again sometime soon. Now let's catch up with Josh Sparks. Luck tends to even out over time. If you hunt hard and smart, your bad seasons will give way to good ones, and your good ones, unfortunately, will often give way to bad ones. That is where we find Josh Sparks. Last year, Josh killed two really good bucks after only a few days of total hunting time. This year, Josh is learning what it feels like when that luck evens out. One of the spots Josh hunts each year is a farm owned by Lee Abraham. Lee hunts there and so does his family, so Josh has a pretty short list of bucks that he can shoot. While hunting does on Lee's farm last week, Josh had a great encounter with one of his few green light bucks. Well hey guys, it's December 6th and uh, it's about 3.30 here. Tonight as you can tell we're hunting a redneck blind and the deer are finally starting to move. The farm that I'm on tonight is actually the same piece that I shot my buck on this last late season. And it's the same farm that I've been shooting does on this year. Um, tonight's mission is any doe that's going to make its way past the blind. And there's also a buck that we know really well. He's a tight racked eight pointer. Um, just a really big bully. Every photo we have of him this year, he's got his ears pinned back and he's just squaring up on something. With any luck, that eight pointer, he was actually on this camera last night at 5:20, 5:30. So we got colder temperatures. Just evening um, I think 20 degrees or so of a difference and with any luck that'll get him up on his feet earlier and he'll come by this blind again. Rick, Rick. Headed for that draw now. Just be careful, he's looking right at us again. Yeah, because he stopped. He's looking down in that draw though. Oh, he's running into that draw. Sprinting. Where's he going? Mm hmm. He's coming. He's coming to that edge. Holy crap. Well, we just got out of the blind. What a hunt. I mean, we ended up seeing our target buck. Like I said, it was kind of crazy. We rattled at him. 
and he was coming. I mean, he probably closed the distance 150 yards, and then he hit that ditch, and I think he saw that buck that we call the old man eight because we saw him pop out of that ditch walking away, and uh, he just never made his way into bow range, but we're gonna go to where we shot that doe, take up the blood trail, and hopefully she's not too far. But uh, that was a great hunt and the first one of the bow season. Well, we just got her to the field edge. Uh, our hunt was over, but Max just gave me a call and uh, sounds like he put a buck on the ground tonight. They're about to go track him. And uh, I just wanted to wish him a huge congratulations. Um, he's been busting his butt for me all fall, you know, whether it be editing, going and hunting, hanging and hunting in public. We've just had a blast and uh, to have the last night both of us be able to fill a tag. Couldn't be any more happy for him. Can't wait to see photos of the buck. Unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to join him. We're about three hours away, but just felt the need to really wish him a big congratulations. And hopefully it's the first of many Iowa bucks for him. With Owen Riegler spending time with his family, Mike Reed is the last member of our team whose week I'm going to highlight. Mike hunts a combination of small timber tracks inside the city limits and private lands outside that border scattered around eastern Iowa. Killing two really good bucks earlier in the season, Mike burned through his statewide bow tag and his landowner's tag quicker than normal this year, but Mike still has his urban zone tag. Fortunately, the action there is showing signs of life after Mike saw a solid shooter in recent days. In Iowa, the bow season ends when the regular firearm season opens but Mike can keep hunting with a bow as long as he stays inside the urban zone. That is where we will find him until the late season opens just before Christmas when many of us will pick up another statewide buck tag, a tag good for bow or muzzleloader. That is the same situation in which I find myself. After filling my second buck tag on November 22nd, I spent a few days hunting does, but now my focus shifts to what and where I will be hunting once the late season arrives. With that in mind, I'll be running cameras these next two weeks, hopefully finding a few targets and looking forward to Christmas for more reasons than just time with family and presents under the tree. I think the late season is going to be really good on my farm this year. I can't wait. These stories and more will continue to unfold right here every week. We appreciate you joining us on this journey. We will see you right back here again next week for the next episode of Midwest Whitetail. And remember to always dream big.